Welcome to Job Reinvented Show. Level up your career with confidence. I'm your host, Panta Kalhor. Episode 14, Adjusting My Business to COVID by Providing the Benefit to Doc Training Online with Michael J. Soler, owner and master doc trainer of Blue Line K9. Please subscribe to Panta Kalhor Transition Channel and pre-order my book, Naturally Conceived, through Amazon. Thank you for watching. Welcome to Job Reinvented Show. I'm your host, Panta Kalhor. These days, because of COVID, many people have changed their business. Some completely shut down their business and start another thing. And uh, some other people switch to an online business and working remotely with, uh, with their clients. Today, I have uh, Michael J. Soler. He is um, the owner and master dog trainer of Blue Line K9, located in Hartford, the country, Maryland. In the past 12 years, Michael has helped over 3,000 dogs and their families develop better relationship through training. And uh, he, he's going to talk about how his business changed during the COVID-19. Hi, Michael. It's good to have you here. Welcome to my show. Thank you for having me. Yep. All right, tell me about yourself. How did you become dog trainer? So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty funny hearing things about yourself, you know. Um, but so how, how my journey began was really, you know, as a kid, um, I, you know, I trained my dog to do little fun things around the house. Uh, but when I had come home from Iraq and was trying to find myself, my uh, girlfriend at the time, I just became a police officer, and my girlfriend at the time was really – just trying to convince me to get some sort of hobby. And um, she convinced me to go ahead and get a dog and start taking some courses on it. And before I knew it, dealing with the PTSD, was it was really difficult. But when she got me convinced that the hobby and getting that into it was a key thing. So when I started taking the courses and becoming a trainer, it really just blossomed. Uh, I was able to, to deal with my PTSD type, you know, way better. But like anything else, my hobby started costing me a lot of money <laughs> and it was killing me uh, to do it. But of course I couldn't give it up because it was helping me on my, my uh, recovery from PTSD. So I started training people's dogs and that's where the journey of entrepreneurship really started for me. So that's, that's the quickest and easiest way I can say it started for me. Um, so I, you know, when we first started training, it was one of the hardest things I had to do was convince somebody that I can train their dog for them. So I charged $20 and I was at their house. I mean, you're talking about hours. I was at their house. I couldn't leave. Like I was just obsessed with making their dog go from zero to a hundred and I wouldn't leave their houses. So for $20, you had like three to four hours worth of dog training from me at the time. Um, and you know, I guess because one of the biggest things for me has always been my integrity that I continued down this journey one step at a time. And I never allowed the company to grow faster than I could make sure the quality was top notch. So when we fast forward to present day, 14 years later, we are now in business for 14 years. Uh, we have uh, three locations throughout the country. We have one in North Carolina, two here in Maryland. Uh, we do field trips and, and everything. But when COVID hit, it was scary yeah. because we did, yeah, we did in-home training. So it was rough. It was scary. Like, what are we going to do? How are we going to fix it? And uh, that's when we launched our fourth branch and got onto virtual dog training. Which, that's interesting. How, how do you do it? Just online? Sure. So, yeah. so what, one of my biggest things has always been that I refuse to be like everybody else. You know, if everybody else is doing it and copying, that means there's most likely that the quality control is probably low, right? When you think about it, everybody can make a hamburger. You can make a hamburger at, at home. Yeah. You know, so, you know, when you think of McDonald's, there's a McDonald's on every corner. There's a, a Burger King on every corner. And when you think of the quality control of those hamburgers, they're probably low quality. You know, easiest way to looking at it. 
So one of the biggest things that I always turn around, I'm not knocking any major companies, but one of the things I looked at was how do I keep my quality up? If all of the dog trainers are trying to figure out a way to do Zoom dog lessons, I had to figure out the psychological end that made it better. What is the benefit of going virtual? So me and all my, my staff, we all got together and we decided to do was go from, a, um, and not just do Zoom calls, but to go from nothing to everything. So now we have an entire virtual university to teach you everything you need to do to train your puppy. So from grooming to into how to hold a treat, the understanding how you get dressed, um, everything, psycholo say the psychology into it, everything you think of in a, in a full-fledged academy. And then you get Coaching Unleashed, which is one of our trainers working with you to keep you on track, answer questions, and modify it through video review. So you actually videotape yourself training your dog, send it to us, and we watch it together with you and audit you and tell you how to fix yourself and show you other videos and how to, to do those things to really better your skill set. So it's, it's been one of those things of what I like to call is revolutionizing the industry. Yes, and it is. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things that I'm like, you know, how do you, like I said, it's, I don't want to be like everybody else. And, you know, this isn't my first business. I actually had a carpet cleaning company when I was 16. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. So this is not my first business. I had a carpet cleaning company when I was 16 and sold the contracts literally uh, a couple of years later for around 80 to 90,000. I forgot what it was because I was a kid and I spent all the money, but uh, <laughs> it was what I did, you know, and one of the, even back then it was, uh, I was in a Jersey shore. I, my carpet cleaning company was dry carpet cleaning. So the restaurants were able to, to open up within hours of me cleaning the carpet. So we were able to get those contracts very quickly. So again, it was always one of those things of holding the company to a higher standard. And that's when I realized as an entrepreneur, I had to ask myself, there's certain things I had to think about. And one of the big questions was, do I want to be the number one business in the industry or do I want to be the best business in the industry? And that's where I decided to be the best. So when everybody was doing their Zoom dog training online, we let that market just go. We didn't try to compete in and try to figure out how do we get our little piece of it. Instead, we decided that we were going to team up as a strong team. And I got all my trainers together. They're all throughout the different videos. And what we did was we analyzed it from the point of view of being in our homes, locked up. Our dogs are going crazy. How do we socialize them? How do we get the education to them? Because one of the biggest things that I could say is you can go to YouTube right now and find out how to train your dog any day of the week. You want to learn how to do a sit command? There's millions of videos. But what none of the videos teach you is the why the dog is listening to you. And when you understand the why, the how becomes that much easier. And then your dogs do it over and over and over again with little to no effort. Uh, even like this evening, we even have a camaraderie tonight because of the COVID restrictions. We, were, we had to shut down our, our team building days. And with tonight, we, we launched it back uh, where we bring our dogs in and we, we, were, we perfect our own skill sets. And we're already seeing some goods and bads uh, from the COVID shutdowns from some of our own dogs. So this is where we take this stuff, we film it all night long. And then we'll, we launch it back on our, our YouTube channel and our now our Dog Owner University to, again, show people that, hey, look, we're all in the same boat, you know, and, and understanding why the dogs are changing and understanding the Clever Hans effect to operant conditioning versus classical conditioning, which, you know, I always tell people, you know, the most boring class that you'll ever take in life is psychology, but the number one class that will get you in life is psychology, you know, it's that. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's where a lot of people tend to, you know, everybody remembers Pavlov, right? You, you remember, you know, Pavlov with the ringing of the bell. What most people tend to forget that Pavlov wasn't actually experimenting with training a dog. Okay. <laughs> studying salvation and the digestive system. And he stumbled upon classical conditioning. Mm -hmm. Because what he did was he actually realized that the dog Pavlov started salivating every time the guys would walk into the room wearing lab coats to feed the dogs. Okay. So then he did it again and he started ringing the bell. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Pretty neat. Right. So yes. what he discovered was that if you repeat a behavior over and over and over again, it becomes a habit and that's classical conditioning. Well, most people, then you have to think about, well, within drug training, everybody talks about Pavlov, Pavlov, Pavlov. 
but then you forget Dr. Skinner, which is where you can curve the behavior, where you took the pigeons and you had them hit the red dot to get fed. And then you have, class, then you have Clever Hans, who was the mathematical horse. He was able to tell math, the horse was able to tell math. Now, the funny thing about that is this, the reason why I bring them up is not because I want to talk dog training, but we want to talk business, right? Yeah. If everybody gets so used to the same ordeal, classical conditioning, it becomes less valuable. Would you agree? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Running a business, you have to remember that the clever Hans effect is where people can predict what you're going to say, do, and sell. And that happens because you become classically conditioned into what you're doing, saying, and selling. So you need to now understand the operant condition, which is molding your company to fulfill the wants of your clientele. Exactly. And show them. So one of the biggest things that we look for in our clients is that we interview our clients to see if they have what it takes to work with us. Not That's a us. unique way. That's a really unique way. I've never heard of it. Because I was thinking, how do you want to train dogs when you can't uh, physically touch them or see them? It's so difficult. And then you said, yes, uh, you, there is a way. They uh, actually video their dog and you review their video <laughs> to see yeah. how they're doing, which is great. And what I like about your points is that you said you want to be you don't want to grow more than what you can offer, which is yeah. the perfect idea because one of the problem entrepreneurs have is that some of them pay lots of money for their marketing, but they cannot afford the service. Let's say uh, you have a small restaurant and you only afford five to 10 people in your restaurant and it's like very small restaurant, like a takeout. How can you afford hundred people there? So you cannot do more than what you can afford with your customers. And right. the good thing is uh, keep the quantity low, but the quality higher is much better then you just add your clients more and more. That's it. That was our, our key thing as we grow each time. And again, that's why we interview our clients to see if they're the right fit for, to work with us instead of the other way around where a lot of, we have found is a lot of our competitors, uh, they tend to just grab anybody and they, uh, like, uh, you know, they just get anybody in there and then they come up with a million of reasons why the dog was no good or the owners didn't do the training. We don't train the dogs. We train the people. I'm sure people have, I mean, literally have heard that my entire life. Well, most dog trainers, you know, it's the, you're training the people, not the dogs. And I'm like, well, if I was training the people, I'd be called a teacher. <laughs> I'm, I'm right. dog I train dogs, you know, when it comes to training the people, that's not true. We train the dogs. And sometimes based on what the need is or what it may be, we have to educate the owners and the handlers on the whys, right? Okay. Why do we hold this treat a certain way? Why do we do what we do a certain way? That's the why we do it. And it's the same thing when we teach businesses and we have franchise locations, which I've been really blessed to be surrounded with such amazing people because when even our franchises have been born, you know, when the owners of the franchise locations came in, you know, they had to fit our mold and understand that our core beliefs are not about the money and it's not about becoming the number one company that everybody wants to be with. It's about giving the right quality and taking care of each client's need and customizing the program to each one of our clients. Because just like people, dogs learn differently and you have to mold the training and the why factors to fit each individual family. So as we've been blessed enough to bring in different franchise owners and have them a believing in our core. We also give them entrepreneur expertise and teaching them that it's okay not to worry about certain things. You know, a lot of them come in and they're stressed out about, we're not going to reach our sales. Uh, the marketing's not working. This phone call is not being done. This isn't happening or, or something like that. Um, that's where a lot of that comes down into certain set of uh, circumstances, right? And that's where we have to put perspective in right so when we're teaching our entrepreneurs that stuff that are a part of our group we have to show them that take a breath focus on your current clients when you give everything you can to the one you're working with 
one will become two. Yes. Two will become four. Yeah. Four become eight. Exactly. I like this idea. Yep. I like it. Because they will brag about you. And when they're bragging about you, you're going to get your next sale. And that way you don't have to stress about it. You don't have to panic about it because you're only going to get what you need to be the best at what you're doing. And that's the key. Just focus on you, your task, and your brand will build. And the more people get behind it and understand the consistency in it, it will go all by itself. Yes, quality is number one priority in your business. And that's beautiful. Hands yes. down. Yep. Yeah. So what are the three... Uh, best tips you can give to entrepreneurs to be successful in their business? So there, there's, there's three main things that I work with all the time. As I, there's a, um, which is pretty funny. You, you said three. Um, I do believe that everybody has three vital functions um, in what they do. So mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur, you have to know what your three vital functions are and then let your team do the rest and you master those three. And when you establish those three things, you will be fine. Now, what those three things are, are different for every entrepreneur. As I said, we have franchise owners in Blue Line Canine, which I'm really blessed to have. But what's nice about them is they're, they're essentially running their locations. Their franchise location is their business. But their three vital functions are different than mine. So my three vital functions for my company, in particular for me, my responsibilities are, is number one is quality control. Number two is the marketing and branding. Mm -hmm. And number three is to continue to motivate my people because I believe that by taking care of my people, they will help develop the process, which will give us the profits we need to continue to grow. So if my employees never have to worry about their paychecks, their, their fears, their distractions, because I'm taking care of those things for them. I'm helping them. I teach them how to budget their personal finances. I coach them on buying their cars. I literally will take I, any person that works for Blue Line Company or even doesn't work for Blue Line Company, Blue Line Can I? If they stop me and say, Mike, I need help with these with this area financially, not asking me for money, but they're asking for the advice. I stop everything I'm doing to give them that time and effort because that's where I'm good. That's one of my vital functions. So by doing that, they can come to me and that's one stress off of them. So because of the fact I'm not in the trenches every day, they are, they're able to modify our programs to give better quality to my clients. So which means let them fly, let them soar, let them be successful in what they do and give them the support. So people equals process equals profits. Take care of your people. They'll help build the process that will give you your profits. Stick to your three vital functions. You'll be nothing but taken care of. Beautiful. I hope <laughs> no, I like it. Actually, as a project manager, I used to be a project manager for years. And uh, I see what you say really works uh, because we needed to take care of our team. If you feel yourself as a part of the team, then you can grow with your team. But if you just think that you are managing your team, that's a different story. So as you work and move with your team, you feel all the difficulties, all the deadlines, all the sorrow and happiness inside the team. So you are not separate from that team, which is which is a great idea because yeah. uh, you motivate each other and you can actually build this business together. So they actually know they are part of this business and the team. That's right. Yeah. I tell people, do you know the difference between the CEO and the, and the janitor is? No. <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> Nothing. If that mop, if that floor needs to be mopped, there's nobody too big to do it and they should pick up the mop. There has been plenty of times that I, that my employees have seen me doing the bottom of the barrel work because they were busy and that it help, helps them. If they need the weekend off, that they want to go home early and they've been working and the only thing left to do is maybe is mop the floor or clean the kennels or do something like that, you should never be too big to pick up that broomstick or that mop and clean it. 
that little bit of an effort and, and putting your title to a side would really grow in more ways than anybody than you could possibly imagine. I mean, I tell my, my employees all the time, you know, you can't push a string from behind in order to keep it straight. Yes. You have to lead from by pulling it. And I can't pull you up that ladder if I'm unwilling to go down back down there to help you. So if I'm going to go out there, even like tonight, we do our group night every Wednesday evening at my training center. All my staff from all over is always welcome here. And we do re-education. We do bite work. We do all of these different forms of dog training and education. We buy pizza and we have a good time. And sometimes at the end of the night, like right now, because uh, we're in my truck, by the way, because we were doing that when I came out for the interview, uh, my staff actually just left, all of them. And I'm going to go inside and disinfect the entire facility because that's <laughs> the last person's job. And that's how it works. So it really shows, you know, take care of your people, as you say, because that's what really motivates. Yes. Beautiful. So what are the three big mistakes entrepreneurs do and they cannot succeed in their business? Oh, that's, that's a great one. So that's the, so this, that's my favorite subject. Where <laughs> fail. All right. So. Number one is failure is the only way to succeed. So the first thing is you have to know, stop fearing failure. Failure is a part of success and you cannot be successful without failure. So enjoy failing. It is the best part of the entire thing because if you always did it right, it would just be boring and suck. So enjoy it. The biggest motivation I have is my, my little journals. So you can see my journal. Oh, I have I a journal too. <laughs> journal yeah. for every single thing I do. Now, some people have one journal. I have, I have a journal for stuck in the truck, a journal for my thoughts, a journal for my life, a journal for my business, a journal for my numbers. I have journals galore and I keep them all, but it allows me to track. So number one is enjoy failure because it means you're succeeding. That means you're trying new things until it works. Enjoy it. It's awesome. Just make sure you track it so you don't repeat it. Because if you repeat it, you're making mistakes. You don't want to repeat failure. You want to learn from failure. Thomas Edison said it best. He discovered a thousand ways not to make a light bulb. He didn't make mistakes, right? So those are little things we learned. So that's number one. Enjoy your failure and make sure you track it. Number two is most entrepreneurs and business owners do not understand the numbers. Your business is like driving a car and you need to know <laughs> ages. What is things costing you? How much your time is worth? And finding the best people to do the job that costs you the most. Don't get on Facebook. It'll make you depressed. Pay somebody else to do it. You'll make more money. You're way better off. You know your business. You probably don't know Facebook. Stay off of it. Pay somebody. Know your dashboard because that dashboard, that's going to tell you how much money you're making, how much your time is worth, how much your costs are. You need to know those numbers. At a drop of a dime, somebody can ask me what something costs in any one of my locations, and I will tell you exactly what it costs, period tell you exactly what it costs at a drop of a dime. I can tell you my payrolls. I can tell you who costs much and who needs to be where and why, because you need to know if you were driving a race car down the, down the, uh, on a, on a speedway, right? You want to know what's going on with your car. Is it overheating? Is it this? Is it that? You should know the same with your business. And number three, Ready for number three? This is my favorite yes. one. Yes, I was, I was thinking about number two. Actually, I talk with uh, so many entrepreneurs and they always say, uh, said, outsourcing is the best way to save money. Because yeah. what happened, you think that you don't pay and you're going to do everything by yourself. But, uh, but what you do, you are exhaust yourself to learn new things and you are not doing the best. <laughs> So you cannot get the best out of it. It's better you give it to someone else who is professional doing it in the best way. Doesn't cost you too much 
if you want to do it yourself, you have to uh, not only pay the money, but you have to uh, take time to do it, take more time to do it. Well, here's the best way, because you take that, for example, right? And you, like you just said, it takes time to learn it, it takes time for those things, right? All you have to do to figure out, because a lot of people are like, well, it doesn't cost much to outsource. Well, here's the thing. It doesn't cost anything to outsource. And I'll tell you why. There's nobody so far that I've ever outsourced a thing to cost the same amount as my hourly wage. Okay. <laughs> I, I make $150 an hour. Mm -hmm. If I outsource my Facebook, they don't charge $150 an hour. Yeah. So if I Facebook myself, it's costing me $150 an hour. If I'm on air for three hours. I like it. Yeah. That's I'm broke. Yeah. Because if you, you think that you are not paying, but, uh, but you are because you are paying out of your time. Your time that's, is valuable, right? That, that yeah. Is. That's the point. What's yeah, the third I, one? <laughs> right. So number three. Now I forgot. No, <laughs> What's the third, <laughs> uh, third mistake? There. Um, my, my number three thing is asking the wrong people for advice. Mm. Do ask people that do not have what you want to get advice from. Don't do it. Don't ask them. Hey, listen, I'm starting a business. What do you think? If that person doesn't own a business, don't ask them. Yeah. <laughs> they don't. Whatever their opinion is, is wrong. It doesn't matter. They don't know. Amazing. Hey, thinking about buying a new car. Does that person have a new car? They're going to tell you to buy a new car. If they have a used car, they'll tell you to buy a used car. People are only going to give you advice on the things that they know. So if you're looking to get advice from somebody, get, seek out the people that are doing or having what you want. So don't ask somebody that's divorced about marriage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Don't do it. So if you're not a successful entrepreneur or, or, or for better yet, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. If you're looking to become a successful entrepreneur, don't ask somebody that has a job. Yeah. They don't know definitely. what it is. Because they get used to having the pay slip. So definitely yeah. they're not happy with entrepreneurship because they're afraid of it. Yeah, and then right. they're they going to... Uh, they're not going to motivate you to do your job. And then after some time, you give up. That's it. <laughs> That's it. So don't go to them. You know, we're oh. like, oh, I'm going to go to ask my parents. My parents are so supportive. But if they weren't entrepreneurs, they're not the ones. They might coach you, but they'll be like, you should really get a job. How's business? Yeah. <laughs> Usually nobody out of entrepreneurs. I mean, if you are not entrepreneurs, you don't have a good idea and you cannot give good advice to other people. Usually everybody is not really optimistic about entrepreneurship because it's hard oh, and yeah. it's not everybody's job. That's like, right. Yeah. That's the third question I'm, I'm going to ask you. Who do you think shouldn't do entrepreneurship? Nobody. I think everybody should do it. I think we all have the ability and skill set to do it. Um, the truth be told is not everybody is meant mentally to handle the stress, but entrepreneurship is not just about opening a business or running a business. Being an entrepreneur is about adventuring in your life and enjoying every breath you get to take. Yes. So the truth is you need to seek all this stuff. You need to seek it. So you might not be an entrepreneur when it comes to, let's say opening and running a company or a business or something, but you could be the entrepreneur that leads the pathway into hiking, uh, kayaking, video gaming. You never know, but remember, enjoy the journey. It is a fail safe system because every time you fail, it lets you know you're doing something on the right path because you're learning from it. So I don't believe anybody, I believe everybody could become an entrepreneur. We just have to not classify an entrepreneur as a business owner, but as an entrepreneur, as a dreamer is what we really have to be because everyone's dreams are amazing. And I truly enjoy meeting new people every day and, and seeing what they have to offer. Um, so yeah, I think everybody should do it. I think one aspect of a failure is that you're afraid 
uh, to be humiliated or uh, somebody tell you something, oh, you did this and you feel bad, you know. But uh, if you don't try new things, you never learn new things. And you never, uh, all, you never go out of your comfort zone to feel brave, happy, and courageous. Let's say if you have a normal life, every day, same thing, same thing, no creativity, it's very boring and dull life. So right. you always need something new. Like, like kids, you see kids, when they have something, like my daughter, uh, I buy her something and then she play with it. She's very excited to see it. She play with it. After some time, she doesn't even care about it. <laughs> <laughs> so she always needs something new to try on, to be excited. Then I learned something from her. I said, okay, that's why people are not happy because uh, they always try to do normal things, boring things, everyday repetitive jobs and everyday things because it gives them more security because they don't need to go out of their comfort zone. But as soon as you see something new and try something new, that, that moment you start something in yourself. You break something in yourself, something brave happening. That's why excitement uh, coming out of you. I, I'll be honest. My motivation in life uh, for everything I've ever done um, has really just has always been the fear of failure. And it's never been, you know, when you, you said about um, the feeling humiliated and things like that. Uh, yeah, to a degree, I felt, you know, it was one of my fear factors was feeling humiliated until I started learning so much about psychology. And now I actually get to teach at a university. I go in and I talk to the psychology department. And one of the things that I talk to them about is, and this is a really cool thing about anybody that's looking to get out there in business or get on a Facebook and get out there and do this is this. You ready? Every time you open your mouth, there's going to be eight people that are going to say something negative and two people that are going to say something positive. But <laughs> Remember, there's 10 people talking. So no matter what they're saying, you're still being bragged about. So for eight people saying something crappy, there's two people saying something good. There's 10 people talking. Just like tonight. What's awesome about tonight is this podcast is going to go out, right? People are going to hear it. Some people are going to say that I'm a quack and I'm crazy. And that's cool because you're still okay, Michael J. Solar is a quack and somebody else is going to hear my name, Google my name, and they're in turn going to help me become successful. So for all of my haters, thank you for all my likers. I love you, but awesome because you're all talking and I appreciate it. So 10, so don't ever fear the humiliation because what I've learned is that is what moves you to the next level. That means there's 10 people talking. Yeah. Enjoy. Actually, I talk with one of the entrepreneurs. And she said, you know, I never, I'm never worried about how many followers I have or what I'm doing in my business. She's a very successful business owner. And she said, whoever needs my service, come to me. So I don't care how many people talk about me or I don't really care about other people's re reaction. The only thing I know is that having a good quality service, enjoy what I'm doing. And then if somebody align with my service and really needs it, then it come, he, he comes and pick it up. So I said, yeah, that's right. You don't need to have all the follow followers. You know, after sometimes you need to filter people who really are clients, you know, who really want to buy your business, you know. So you're right. I love like it. This. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you have your website or program? I think I can put it, uh, put your link there. I have it here, but yeah, it, you, um, yeah talk it, about it because then it goes to audio and people can hear it as well. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, if you guys are looking to follow us, you could check out my Bluetooth, um, I'm sorry, my YouTube channel, uh, with the URL of blue B L K nine TV.com B L K nine 
TV.com. It goes right to our YouTube channel where you can see our dog talk and stuck in the truck episodes, get free dog training advice, um, some motivation on Wednesdays. You can also check out our dog training company at BlueLineK-9.com. That's BlueLineK-9.com. And on Facebook and Instagram, we are at BLK9MD. So those are uh, all of our URLs and links. Uh, so I hope to see more and more people joining us. And we do live shows. Uh, so Dog Talk is live on Tuesday nights on our Facebook channel, which is the at BLK9MD, where we give free Q&A on dog training, uh, also anybody in the pet industry. So we literally bring other entrepreneurs on, business owners that have dog-friendly businesses or um, – give donations to rescues that support the industry. We try to help them out and give them that notoriety and dog talk. And then on Wednesdays, we do a show called stuck in the truck where I get it, where I was originally used to be stuck in my truck, traveling places, building other uh, businesses at the time. And I started, uh, cause I, so last year, this is going to go back in that PTSD moment. Yes. It, uh, let's, let me say something. Can yeah. we finish this? And then, uh, yeah. I'm going to ask you some question for PTSD. I'm so excited. Let's finish oh, this yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you got to hear the story is I used to be so scared to put myself on recordings or TV or anything. I would never, I hated pictures of myself and everything of the sort. So last year I was stuck in traffic and I needed some motivation. I really did really bad. So I made a recording to myself, but I accidentally hit Facebook live. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I was talking to myself, like giving myself like a mirrored motivational thing I'm recording. I don't know why or how I did it, but I hit Facebook live. I was, and I made this thing and I was like, here I am stuck in a truck. And now it's a year later and it continues on uh, going each week. And that's what one of the things I wanted to tell people that are out there being entrepreneurs. Look, I made an accident and made a video and I faced my fears and got over it. And now my business is growing because what it did was it allowed people to really get to know who I am, what my company is about, and how we can help serve them. And, you know, take the chance, get out there and do it. Don't let little things hold you back. Um, I know there was a lot of things in my life, which we will be on another episode, right? To talk about Yes, BTS. yes, right now, after this. <laughs> yeah. After this. Yeah. And uh, one of those things that we did that I had to suffer and go through and figure out ways because... I was so messed up in the head, I couldn't even talk to a doctor. Okay, a hang on, hang on, don't go, go don't go there. Don't episode. go there. <laughs> okay, all right. Don't hold you back. Go out there and do it, everybody. Life is an awesome challenge and an awesome adventure, so get out there and enjoy it. Be an entrepreneur, and don't think it's about business. It's about life. Enjoy it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. I really enjoy that. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>